Welcome back, Danger Cats, to another Danger Cat podcast. Uncle Hack back at it again with uh, spewing my bullshit to the world and uh, giving my thoughts and opinions. Not that they matter. I understand that I am nothing but a worthless human like yourself. And uh, I just give my opinion when it's not needed. As always, podcast69 at dangercatshop.com and you can receive 15% off your order today. New content up on our Patreon. We have probably what I would consider one of the funniest amateur contests that we have done. Um, I, I don't even know how to explain it. We're in Kamloops, but it's to me fucking hilarious. Maybe to others, not so much, but I laughed. That's all that matters because... Uh, you know, my opinion, my podcast, I don't care. I don't give a shit, okay? Here's a fucking episode. Woo! Another glorious day. Another wonderful day. I'm kidding. This world can suck my bag. What a time to be alive. I don't... It's annoying as all hell, you know, I, however, um, went to a gym and it felt fucking phenomenal. It felt great. I don't know what it, I'm, I've spent the past two years being a complete fucking deadbeat by, uh, consuming as much booze as I possibly can. And, uh, you know, obviously I've told you the cocaine stories, well, a few of them and, being just a complete dipshit, putting my life through stress and hell. And uh, prior to all that, I was, believe it or not, a pro fighter. In the terms of pro fighter, it just means I fought professionally um, in organizations around Alberta, mainly Lethbridge, Alberta, to be exact, in Rumble in the Cage. And I was a very healthy, young, dapper young man. And then I decided to make videos on the internet and be a complete moron, which I don't know what the fuck went in my head that I needed to be like Motley. I needed to make the most uh, just erratic, wild behavior was needed. I couldn't just do this. I couldn't, you know, I had to go out and just, oh man, and be the biggest dipshit. It's so fucking cringy to look at. I hate it so fucking much. It's like, hey, why don't we just go out and do the dumbest fucking thing possible? Be as fucking drunk as humanly possible. And uh, we'll go host amateur strip clubs or amateur strip nights at titty bars. Huh? How's that sound? And while we're there, instead of ensuring that people have a good time, I'll make sure I have the best fucking time possible, okay? I'm going to snort all your fucking cocaine. I'm going to drink the bar as close to uh, possible as being dry. That makes no sense what I just said, but I don't know why I fucking did it. I, like, I wish I had a reasoning. It's like, oh, well... Got a little bit of fame on your hands, fucking B-list, not even a B-list, I'd fucking, I'd put myself up maybe like a, mm, maybe like a, a K-list, or like L, yeah, maybe I'm like an L-list celebrity, um, nothing to fucking brag about, nothing to like, hey, nothing, I, listen, I'm, I got a little bit of fame. I'm famous enough that I get a free shot at a bar, but not famous enough where I can walk to the head of a line at a club and be like, hey, listen here, do you know who the fuck I am? <laughs> like, nor would I ever do that because that is just stupid to me. I can wait in fucking line. And if, it's, and if a club has a line that long, I'm not waiting anyways. So, or it's a place that I don't want to be in. That's just me as a human. I don't want to... If, if you have to wait to get in this fucking place, I can imagine the people inside are just not humans I want to be around. They're not. If you have to wait... Like, there's a few bars I would wait in line to go into. Like, obviously, uh, when I was growing up in Lethbridge, Alberta, not too many options, okay? 
So you had to wait to go to certain fucking bars. But again, we didn't really do that. We kind of had friends that worked at the, uh, as bouncers that would let us slip in. So we were those cool guys that utilizing our friendships to get places we'd never be just being ourselves. Because we were pathetic young fucks. <laughs> I, don't under, I don't know what that voice is. That's me making fun of myself. So if you hear that voice, that's me uh, narrating my life. Because I feel like I, could, I would never have anybody elegant or uh, well-spoken narrate my life. It'll be probably some deadbeat, uh, what, what I assume is a New York uh, accent that I'm doing. Hey, listen. <laughs> yeah, that's pr- pretty, pretty... Uh, Brooklyn-ish, if you will. All right, there's this fucking retard, all right? He grew up with a single mother. And uh, she uh, did the best she possibly could, but the best uh, with him was about mediocre, all right? His sisters, on the other hand, went on. uh, They went and did good things. One became a teacher, first one out of the family to go to university. Uh, The other one... You know, she went and uh, went to school, became a petroleum engineer, and then this fucking retard, uh, well, it just kind of speaks for himself. That one was a lost one, okay? You know, not every cub in the pack is going to survive and be the greatest, but uh, yeah, then we got this one. He decided that he wants to be a fucking idiot on the internet, and the other two are actually successful deep down inside. Uh, uh, we believe that, uh, the reason he is the way he is is because his father was very absent in his life, didn't have a male figure, so he's acting out a lot. We suspect that, uh, now this has turned into, like, a fucking FBI, (laughs) an FBI kind of investigative fucking report. We suspect that this fucking jackass, if he had any male influence in those, uh, very influential years of his life, he might have turned out half decent, maybe went to college, got a degree, did finance, uh, ripped off the rich, and then made himself rich to do, uh, you know, elaborate things with his, he could do fucking, uh, he'd be able to fly to Barbados and uh, make fun of the poor. He would be able to spit in the face of Mexicans working at resorts, because he has the fucking money to do so, okay? That's where this guy's at. Where he could have been. He's not there, not even close. Not even remotely close. In fact, he's complete opposite. Okay? Complete opposite. The guy's a jackass. He encourages grown men to smash beer cans off their head and drink them. Uh, big advocate for uh, licking the anus of females and having females lick his anus which we uh we don't really condone here at this academy he also is a massive fan of uh strippers (laughs) why we don't know we believe it's because of the fact that he has zero game and can't pick up anybody in the bar for himself so uh, like any, like every pathetic loser that likes to step into these places, this is the only time he sees a live naked woman in front of him. <laughs> a living being that shows her breast and vagine to this fucking jackass has to be paid. <laughs> oh, fuck. Sounds true, though. If there's somebody that's going to narrate my, uh, my life, I want it to be me in a Brooklyn accent. If, there, if I ever reach a level of fame, which I aspire to be, where A, I want to be on the chopping block of being canceled. I also want to be so famous that um, uh, I, I, I get a movie made of me. You know, I, I, I want to be so famous that when I walk in the streets, people part because I have, well, they have to, because I got nine security guards, and I want them black and six foot six, deezed out, fresh out of San Quentin. Is San Quentin even a thing? I don't think San Quentin's even a, a prison anymore. Never mind. I want them out of the L.A. County Jail. I'll employ ex-cons. That's what I'll do. And I'm diverse and smart enough to know 
that I'll hire only black ones because uh, I don't want no white boy protecting my ass. I, w- I want some, you know, I want some gangster. And the only time I'd ever be allowed to hang around gangsters is if I paid them. So I aspire to be that famous. I just hope that they're loyal enough never to turn on me. We've all uh, watched the drug cartel m- movies or, you know, drug empire movies where one guy gets a little jealous. I don't need that. I just need, you know, a few that, like an entourage. Call it an entourage, a paid-for entourage. I th- I'm pretty sure that's what an entourage is anyways. But that's what I want. That's the level of fame I want to be. I want to be up there, you know, not Tom Cruise famous, maybe like, maybe like, who, who would I want to be as famous as? Maybe like a, like a Seth Rogen. You know, everybody knows who he is. He deserves, like, they, they kind of don't fuck with him too much. They're not going crazy. People aren't crying when they meet him. Uh, where in Tom Cruise, I feel like there's enough psychopaths out there that would possibly try to kill him if he was in public. Yeah, maybe I would get to a point where I'm so rich and famous that um, I got to hop back on the cocaine. I'll have to get back on the cocaine uh, and it'll be so fucking pure. Like, it'll be pure as virgin pussy. Nah, not, not Epstein virgin pussy. I'm talking legal virgin puss, okay? We're not pedos around here. We're not, uh, we're not going to be strung up in a case. <laughs> but yeah. That's, that's the level of fame I, some, I, I, have, I aspire to be. I want to be as famous as Seth Rogen. And he's Canadian too. Ah, damn. So then maybe, maybe we both become these Canadian uh, fame whores, you know? I don't think he's that much of a fame whore. He's just a funny dude. But that's what I aspire to be. I aspire. I want to be so famous that my apologies, even when they don't mean anything, they mean something to somebody. Kind of like when you rip off a country for 900 fucking million dollars and all you have to do is just say sorry. That's how famous I want to be and, and how serious I want to be taken. You know, I want people to look and be like, wow, what, 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 a, what a strapping young lad. I can't believe, you know, we thought he wasn't going to be shit. We honestly didn't think he was going to leave the town of Tabor. We thought he was going to be laboring at the local feed mill until he was 65. And even then, he would not have enough money to retire. We thought that's, that's what he was going to be. We didn't expect this. If we would have seen this coming, shit, I would have hit him with a pickup truck to make him retarded. <laughs> we would have saved everybody some grief. We would have, you know, we would have not caused grown men to think it's socially acceptable to smash beer cans over their heads around a campfire with children. But that's what we did here. We made it socially acceptable to do so. And the fact that you don't give a fuck and do it anyways is why you're here. Okay, that's why you're here. Because we're on the same level. We don't really, uh, we don't really care the opinions of others. We just kind of do our own thing. We don't hurt nobody. We just want to party. We don't want to hurt nobody. I want to party. <laughs> oh, fuck. But, yeah, I can't believe that. How, you know what? With this whole we scandal here in Canada, for the American listeners, what happened is uh, Justin Trudeau gave a bunch of money to a charity that has ties to his family, which is basically fucking illegal. And his way of going around it was he publicly said, sorry, I'm sorry. Uh, He should have did a little more due diligence on uh, where the money was going. And kind of, you know, he wasn't really looking. And then I believe his mother was a paid speaker at one of their events for a stupid amount of money. I don't know the exact amount, but that's Canadian politics, okay? That's Canadians, period. We fuck up. All we do is just say sorry. And we believe that's acceptable. So for those that are about to get nailed with uh, fraudulent CERB payments, just say sorry. 
That's all you need to do. You just need to say sorry and that you uh, should have did your due diligence. It'll save you serving time in prison because uh, that's just the Canadian way. Sorry is basically 10 years in prison here. Child rapists here in this country uh, get their sentences reduced by 25 years just by simply saying sorry to the victim's parents. That's the Canadian judicial system. Okay. <laughs> I hope to God nobody's taking me serious right now. Please, dear God, don't take me serious. But yeah, if that's how, that's how you deflect any sort of negativity that's coming your way, you don't want that negative air energy entering your aura or your spirit, okay? That money is yours. It's free money. At the end of the day, it's just free money. You were allowed it, okay? And you don't need to pay taxes on it and not go to prison because all you got to do is say sorry. You just got to explain how uh, you didn't realize the uh, consequences of a fraudulent SERB payment. And you will be excused from any sort of sentencing. Um, no community service. They'll actually applaud you and give you to, uh, a key to the city of whichever place you call home is what will happen. Probably even give you a purple heart for your, your honor and uh, complete honesty from not knowing that you were, you were being a fraudulent son of a bitch. They will applaud you and build a statue in your local park as well for saying sorry. For saying sorry. Excuse me. And you will live a long, prosperous life because now you know yourself a little better, okay? You understood your mistake without having to go to prison. A simple apology is all that's needed. That's all they're looking for. You know, all you criminals that, you know, went into a courthouse with a big tough guy attitude, all you had to do was say sorry. You'd be a free man right now. You'd be a free man or if you have served time, that's all you would have had to do. Instead, your arrogance is what got you locked up. Instead of just simply saying sorry, that's all you had to do. All you had to do. According to our prime minister, sorry is worth 25 years in jail. And um, you, you, you idiots just don't understand that, okay? You just don't get it. You're not woke, all right? You're not woke to the progressive culture and the the way sorry just evaporates and makes problems go, ev evaporates problems, just like that. Just, you know, it gets rid of them. Simple, simple sorry. Instead, you know, we're t we, just a simple sorry would, would have saved you the 20 years to 25 years that you served for murdering an ice cream man and robbing him, okay? The time that you spent in prison, those five years for that armed robbery you did at a Mac store, all you had to do was say sorry, you know? You didn't know you couldn't do that. That's all you had to say. Oh, I should have did my due diligence. I, I didn't know I could do that. I fucking didn't know. I had no idea I could point an illegal firearm in the face of a cashier and take the money out of the register. I had no idea. I had no fucking clue. Okay? And all I want to say is I'm sorry. I am sorry. I'm, I, am, I have a lot of learning to do, and I just want to say sorry. Because me as a human, I have no excuse for my actions. But now that I know what I did was wrong, I, will, I, I won't do it in the future. I won't do it in the future. And it's, and it's been a, an, a great learning experience for me in my life. And I do want to say, sorry, once again. The judge would look at you and be like, you know what? Let this man off the charges. Let this man off the charges. Because I believe him. I believe everything he says. Don't even investigate the situation. 
Because this man needs to be free. He needs to exercise all that learning that he just made. Okay, let that man go. Get those cuffs off him. Actually, dust his shoulders off. Get him out of that jumpsuit, that orange jumpsuit. Looks atrocious. You're not a criminal. You're not a criminal. You're a hero. You're a hero for learning what you did was wrong. And now go out there and educate the youth. Get them behind your message of, you know, not doing the wrong thing. That's Canadian politics for you right now. <laughs> You can rob a motherfucker blind. Just say sorry. Just say sorry. Hell, you could get caught with your hand in the fucking pocket. Just, oh, sorry. Shit. I didn't, I didn't know I could do that. I didn't know I could just slip my hand in, in your jeans pocket and steal your wallet and the change right, from my fucking, right in front of you. I didn't know I could do that. Christ almighty. Something's wrong with me, man. Something's wrong with me. What a pathetic fucking place we live in. God almighty. And you wonder, like, if that happened anywhere else in the world, they'd be calling for his head on a fucking stake. Not Canada. Ah. Oh, he said sorry. Hey, Jill. Jill, get in here. Big Trudy said sorry for, for not doing his due diligence. Could you believe that? I, I accept his apology. What a good guy. We should vote for him next, uh, next election. We should. Because he's a good guy. He's a great guy. He said sorry. What, do you, what more else do you want from him? You want him in jail? We can't have this kind, this kind of excellent human in jail. Christ. I think he needs to serve for another 10 years. Personally. That's a good guy. <laughs> oh, fuck Canada. Fuck this place. I love Canada as a whole. But I hate it at the same fucking time. Because most Canadians are actually beauties. I, I really enjoy Canada in that sense. Like, but my God, there's a time when being too progressive just cut, turns around to bite you in the ass. And it's really starting to look that way, isn't it? We're really starting to look like fucking idiots to the world. But then you get like these... You know, you get the globe and mail being like, oh, Trudeau is such a great guy. And the rest of the rest of the world is just like, oh, wow, it must be glorious there. And it's just a complete hellfire once you get here. It's like you're, if you had a rich friend that never invited you over and you finally got a peek into his house just to realize that they have a big house with nothing fucking in it because your parents were stupid and just needed everybody to think that you're rich. That's basically us as a whole, not, not in wealth terms, but by looking at Canada, you think, oh, wow, he just does such a great job with leadership, but it's just a, a fucking, a joke on the inside. You get here and you're like, Jesus Christ, this place is a shithole. It's a great place to live, but my God, you guys f are fucking idiots here. Your leader is a pussy, is a Pussy. Well, we believe in equality. Not saying that I don't believe in equality. I here's what I here's how I think of this, and you know, a shit on me if you want. But we could honestly be in a place like Syria, where radical Islamic extremists are overtaking towns and just decapitating people in the streets, filming it and putting it on the internet, being like, hey, suck my dick, follow, this, follow our ways, or this is what's going to happen to you. Your head's going to be on a fucking fence post. And I, I certainly, I fucking, I blanked out there for a second. Wow. If you're watching this, I apologize. But we could be over there in that, but then we, we find these fucking little micro issues and blow them. We make ants, molehills into mountains or not even molehills. They're like ant hills. Nobody fucking cares when it comes down to uh, simple things like, like, sure, there's some racism, but it's not within the general public. Like the general public 
for the most part, I would say are pretty open-minded people. You know, mo- most people you talk to don't give a shit about what, uh, what sexuality you are, what race you, oh, excuse me, what race you are, what religion you follow. Nobody honestly really gives a shit if you really truly think about it. When's the last time that you were sitting around and you were like, you seen a gay dude and you're like, Jesus Christ, why is that guy even alive? Why is he even breathing right now? Why the fuck? He he shouldn't have a job. He shouldn't have a job. He shouldn't make a living. He should be, he should be slaughtered in the fucking street. That's what he should be. Never. You've never thought that. Christ. Maybe jokingly, because that's what we do. (laughs) Maybe jokingly in your head you've made this, but God forbid if you say it all out, oh my God, he's a sexist, homophobic asshole for making a joke. Everybody's like lost their sense of humor in 2020. And it's driving me nuts. I, I hate to see like some of them, like, I don't really... When it comes to comedians, I kind of li- listen to the guys that are a little off course. Like, they don't really get into this woke culture. Just sit there and be like, Still, I experienced racism the other day from white people. And here's my joke about it. They're actually funny people, I think, personally. Like, uh, I recently started listening to a podcast called Come Town. And if you... Uh, If you want some fucking good old classic, not giving a fuck comedy, I suggest you check it out. Nick Mullen is fucking hilarious. And uh, from time to time, they get on. There's another one that I listen to called Bastard Radio. Uh, They've only have one episode out on iTunes. I don't know if there's um, uh, any more, but it's uh, another great comedian in my eyes. I think he's fucking hilarious, Tim Dillon. He's my favorite comedian right now. By far the funniest, if you ask me. And they, they, they don't give a shit about this woke cancel culture that seems to be just fucking flooding everywhere. It's getting old. It's getting old. Oh, you, you made a joke the day you were born? Canceled, you little pussy. You think you can joke about gays, huh? You think you can joke about Fucking uh, kids being sent to us. They're like, <laughs> kids being sent. And we're calling them cabinets on Wayfair. First off, you fucking lunatics. Oh, it's real. I read a fucking meme on the psychopath bitch that believes crystals will cure cancer. I believe that. Come on. Come on. Can we stop pretending for a fucking second like you know what happens behind the scenes? Like you have an inside scoop of what happens behind closed doors with all the elites of the world? Can we not? Can we please not? You fucking idiots. I seen a post from some stupid single mom that sells skinny tea that wrote out, Oh, if you think Wayfair is fake, oh, this should be great. Yeah. Oh, do you make so much fucking money selling skinny tea that they invite you to these fucking behind closed doors meals? You're behind the iron curtain of the wealthiest people on the fucking planet because you sell skinny tea? I am so delighted that you took the time to write this out because you have all the information I've been seeking about this pedophile ring with the world elites. Do I think it's real? It's more than likely real. But don't sit here and act Like you have all the fucking information because you read a fucking meme from your other psychopath friend that thinks they know what they're talking about. Shut the fuck up. Like, honestly, shut the fuck up. You're bored. That's what it is. You're bored right now. There's nothing on television. There's no new shows. You don't want to rewatch Friends for the seventh fucking time of your life. So you found something to attach yourself. Like, you're faking... You give a shit. You don't give a shit. The moment yoga fucking studios open up and you can go stretch with your friends and afterwards sip expensive coffee from Starbucks and gossip 
about fucking Sherry's new haircut and how shitty it looks, you're going to go back to that. You're going to go back to those days where you fucking gossip about everything that happens in, outside of your shitty life. And right now, this is the only thing that you can feel like you're a part of something. Yoga class is down. You can't, you can't go sit in a fucking park and gossip with other moms about uh, the fashion that these fucking other bitches are wearing. So you sit there and pretend you give a fuck about a, 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 an elite pedophile ring. You don't. Because the moment that life can go back to normal, you turn your blind eye. So don't sit here and fucking thinking that you're all self-righteous all of a sudden. Because you're actually deep down a cunt and nobody likes you. And the fact that you're doing this and being like, oh, oh, you don't care. You don't care. Where were you caring five years ago? Where were you caring 10 years ago? Since when? What? Because your other retarded friends told you about this documentary to watch. And now all of a sudden you just dove in deep. Trust me. I love me some conspiracy theories. They are the f best to watch because I like having my mind blown and it's entertainment to me. Do I think some of them are true? Yeah, there's some bits that I think are true in there. Can I prove it? Fuck no. Do I think lizard people are running the goddamn planet? No. God, no. Where's your proof, you idiots? You look like morons is what you look like. You look like complete morons in my eyes. Oh. Don't you know Wayfair shipping fucking kids across the country to Hillary Clinton and Ellen DeGeneres? How do you know that? I asked the guy, how do you fucking know that? What, did you accidentally order a pillow and a six-year-old Chilean kid showed up? Shut the fuck up. You don't have a fucking clue. Well, well, adrenochrome. Fucking Google it. Okay. Okay. So what? You and fucking Hillary were out in a back alley. You bit into a fucking scared child and all of a sudden got high. Huh? You started flying around like gargoyles, scaring the Patreon or patrons, <laughs> patrons of a fucking Starbucks. Is that what you did? Huh? You're so fucking cooked out of your head. You're jerking off at the fucking entry of a church while the pastor's trying to, hey, like, get out of here. Get the fuck out of here. I'll give you some more fucking adrenochrome here in like five minutes just fucking hide for five five fucking minutes the kids are in the basement man fuck <laughs> fuck you idiots you fucking morons i'm so tired and it's always the people i've i've noticed it's always the people that you're just like dude shut the fuck up shut the fuck up i've watched you rip a gram of cocaine in one line okay i've watched you do that do you think for a fucking second I'm going to believe any conspiracy theory that you give me? 90% of the time, you don't even know what reality feels like because you're fucked up. I'm not going to sit here and listen to your conspiracy theories. Do I watch them? Of course I do because I want to know what the lunatics are up to. You guys are entertaining to me. You guys entertain the fuck out of me. It is, I love watching people argue with one another about, uh, well, you don't believe that they're selling children as pillows on Wayfair? No, I don't. I'm sorry. I don't. Unless there's some physical evidence. Well, on the website, bro, they were selling the same cabinet. The same cabinet. One cabinet was $99. The other one was $14,000. And there was a child's name in it. Okay. Uh, do you have any proof? Any proof? Give me any proof. Do I think that shit's horrible? Of course I fucking do. If it's real and it's fucking happening, it's brutal. I, however, was born into a wonderful world. I was not uh, trafficked, as I uh, think so. I, I, I like to think maybe, uh, maybe there was an old switcheroo at the, at the doctor's office, and I lucked out, and... Uh, who my mother actually gave birth to, got sold in the black market and is now um, sewing soccer balls and G-strings for a few of the elites, you know. Um, 
Warren Buffett accidentally bought, who my mother actually gave birth to. And uh, that child right now is uh, used, well, now he's grown up. He's probably he's obviously going to be the same age. I don't know what he's, uh, I'd like to know what he's up to. I'd like to know what he's up to. He's, uh, he's a heroin addict in the streets of Washington, D.C. <laughs> oh, fuck. I just don't, I, like, I just don't give a shit anymore about any of that nonsense. You know, I, I've cleaned my shit up. I'm worried about m fucking me, you know? Like I said, I don't fucking care anymore. I don't give a shit. I'm, I'm, if I can be the best dude I can possibly be, I'll do that. All right. And even my best is still shit. Okay. All right. I like, am I yelling the N word in public? No, of course I'm not. But I still like, I've got a lot of issues, commitment issues with relationships. I've got a lot of issues like trusting people. I do not trust people. I think you're all scum in my eyes. <laughs> my friends list is full, so quit asking me to go for beers with you. I'm kidding. I, I appreciate the kind gesture. I just don't want to. That's the thing. I don't, I don't get a lot of free time to myself, so when I do get it, I don't take this the wrong way, but I would like to spend it with people I actually know and enjoy. I appreciate the fact that you guys invite me out to go and do things with you, but I don't want to, all right? I'm just being honest. I'll be fucking flat out. If I see you in public and we exchange uh, words, aka I have a conversation, I'm fine with that. But uh, asking me to um, come down to the strip club because you're there is not going to happen. I'm sorry if I'm occupied watching stand-up comedy in my underwear on the couch there is a zero percent chance actually there's a negative pick whatever number you have in your head right now use that put a dash in front of it and that's the chance of me getting off my fucking couch to sit in a strip club with you so i can awkwardly entertain you with stories and uh pretend i give a shit that's uh just not gonna happen and I'll uh, be brutally honest. Um, where was I going with that? I don't know. I'll be brutally honest about it. Yeah, like I appreciate that I have fans of like what I say and what I do. I appreciate the fuck out of it. Because without you, um, this isn't a thing. This isn't a thing. But keep in mind, it's entertainment at the end of the day. I've wanted to do something like this, like I've said numerous times, for many years. I don't want to have a plethora of Facebook friends that pretend they give a shit about me. You know, I'm not picking up the phone and calling you about uh, the depressive state I am, I'm currently in. I'm not depressed right now, but like last year, I was the lowest I've possibly ever been in my life. Life sucked. And I'm not calling you to talk about that. I'm sorry, but it's just like there's... There's this weird thing. I don't know how to explain it. There's this weird thing. I, 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 like, is it cool that people get excited to see you? Yes, it's super cool. It's uh, me, for me, I'm humbled by it. Like, uh, it bring, for some people it fills their head, but for me it, it humbles me I, I, a little bit where it's just like, dude, don't let this shit go to your head, all right? Don't let it go to your head. Like the other day, I got recognized off of TikTok. Somebody's like, hey, dude, you're on TikTok. And I don't know if I like that. <laughs> I don't know if I like that or not. That, because uh, A, I, uh, I jokingly praise the app. I know like for those that listen to this and be like, TikTok is the future, bro. I dick around. Don't take what I say serious because half the fuck, 90% of the shit I say on here is just me dicking around and saying complete nonsense. And there was a time where I kind of lost myself, like the person that I am. And I don't know what the fuck I was talking about. I thought like, oh, maybe we'll talk about politics because I give a shit about that. And I don't know. I think I, I've, I've done some deep diving, figuring out how this fucking noodle of mine works and just 
I don't, I don't fucking know. I am who I am. And I just act the way I act. And there's just certain things I think. And I, I just spew those thoughts into this microphone in hopes to entertain you more than you need to be. That's all I do. It's nothing more, nothing less. There's way more important jobs in the world than this. I just so happen to found the one that I actually really enjoy. And I'm fortunate enough that I own everything around it. So at the end of the day, I'm very, very, very grateful for having fans and having uh, people that follow the brand and give a shit about the brand and, you know, talk about it and feel the need to say it publicly, whether it be to my face or commenting on shit. It is. It's super fucking cool. It's fucking rad is what it is. But to me, for, for me to sit here and act like, um, you know, like I don't know you, I, I, very few of you I've, I've met, and I'm happy, but I don't know you. I don't know what you're going through. I don't. And you know, if you do message me, I will gladly talk to you if you're going through things. Cause that's just the guy I am. But I don't know. I don't know. Uh, it's, it's a fucked up thing, like getting recognized and people thinking they know you, they don't really know you. Like a lot of people think I'm this extreme alt-right fucking lunatic when in reality I'm not. If, if you've talked to me, like I think the whole Wexit thing is completely stupid. I think it's dumb as fuck. Uh, like there's just a, a number of things that I don't agree with on the conservative side and a number of things I, I love more so on the extreme side of both that I don't fucking agree with. And I don't know where I align politically, but in the end, it doesn't matter. I could give a shit. I, I could give a flying fuck, to be honest. And I'm just going to continue joking and dicking around on, on the, the webs of the inter and making, trying to make people laugh. That's an, that's probably what humbles me more is uh, what I do. I don't give a fuck about the money. I, I really don't. I don't give a shit about the money. Is it great? Yeah. Would it, I love to be financially set for the rest of my life? Yes, of course. But I, I, I truly appreciate comedy for what it is. And I want a career in it. I want to do as much as I possibly can in it, whether it be doing skits. Uh, stupid fucking videos, uh, stand-up comedy, and dicking around. That's all I really give a fuck about doing, is making some fucking comedy and poking fun at the state of the world that it's in. And I don't know, I've been taking a little, I've been taking a little time in my quarantine, in my quar, as the white girls say, how's your quar going? Oh, did you learn how to bake bread? Did you become a botanist too? Did you get into any conspiracy theories? Have you been yelling at your mom that she's a racist for not hiring a black gardener? Instead, she hired a Mexican one. Have you screamed at her for that yet? Okay. If your parents voted for Donald Trump, did you hit them in the head with a baseball bat? Because they're fucking neo-Nazis. Did you do that? Huh? Did you boycott Wayfair because when you went to go buy a fucking nightstand, a 13-month-old black kid from Nigeria showed up? Huh? And then instead of, like, sinking your teeth into its neck, and scare, well, prior to that, scaring the shit out of him to get the adrenochrome, you raised that child and he's now a doctor because... Let's be honest, the best doctors in the world are Nigerian. It's a fact. It's a fact. When you go into a doctor's office and you see a white guy, it's almost like, ah, fuck. I, I, mm -mm, mm -mm. I want my doctor Nigerian. They're fucking 10 times smarter. You can't tell me. Here's my argument to that. You can't tell me Nigeria and all those surrounding countries are ridden with disease. You can't tell me 
that the smartest doctors aren't coming out of the countries with the most disease. Boom. Facts, bitch. <laughs> Again, don't take me serious. I'm a fucking idiot. <laughs> oh, just, the, just the thought of it. I'm not laughing at myself. I don't have that big of an ego. Just the thought of it. The things that are in my brain are making me laugh. <laughs> uh, I, I, I would like to see the face of people that don't know who the hell I am or what the hell I'm, uh, that I'm dicking around and to listen to that and then uh, see their face and be like, Jesus Christ, this guy's a psychopath. <laughs> That, that's what went through my head. I'm not laughing at myself, okay? I'm not, I don't have that big of an ego or I'm not that big of a narcissist that I can sit there and be like, hey, Uncle Hack, knock, knock. Oh, who's there? <laughs> uh, Dwayne. <laughs> Dwayne the Twub, I'm drowning. Oh, <laughs> oh, I kill myself. Get him out of here. Get him out of here. Oh, how aren't you the greatest comedian alive? Huh? Uh, how aren't you? Oh God, I, uh, I'm working on a bit right now. I'm going to ruin it. I don't care, but, uh, n nobody in the comedy scene in Edmonton listens to this bullshit, but I'm working on a bit right now where I, I thought it was funny last night. I finally seen that there's a transgender female on the cover of sports illustrated. And the joke I'm trying to write right now is, uh, you know, everybody's been these feminists have been shitting on men for so long, but we're in it. it, it okay. I'll, I'll try it from the start. And this is, this is the, the, um, context is sports illustrated finally has a transgender female, you know? And if we look at this in the terms of Ben Shapiro, okay. That's a man, baby. And we're just so fucking good at everything. We are so good at everything. We're a fucking hot chick. We can be a hotter chick than most chicks. That's how good men are. No wonder. No wonder you're inventing genders to try and attack how great the male gender is. You can't beat us. You can't beat us. We turn into women and we got woman of the year. Thank you, Bruce. Boys, 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 boys. That's how fucking good we are at everything. We are so good at everything that when we turn into a female, we're hotter than you. We're better than you. And that's why we are in the position. That's why there's a wage gap. Because, see, you bitches are, are pretty much only good for burying our children. <laughs> and once we figure out how to um, make a better reproductive system than yours, then you're fucked. You're fucked. You're done. You know what would save female sports? This is another thought that I just had. No one would save female sports. Th dudes, you always want to be a pro athlete, right? That's what we talk about. Chop your dick off. Identify as a female and go and play in, in any pro female sport will absolutely rinse that. And then you would be able to go and, and, and like, maybe there might be a fucking couple fans in the stands for once. <laughs> maybe, maybe you might get a sellout for once, for once in the WNBA's history, they sold out. Because they allowed transgender females in there. The first dunk would happen. Imagine that. Without a trampoline at the bottom. Like those little exercise trampolines. You wouldn't need one of those. You wouldn't have to watch four quarters of layups. You could watch fucking Braun Braun quality basketball. You know. There might, they might even bring back female professional hockey. Because I know what I would do. I'd, I'd go down to the courthouse and I'd change my gender to female. And I'd be a professional hockey player. Live my dream that I've always wanted as a child. Because I was not talented enough to make it to the most prestigious league. So what else? I wasn't going to make the Southern Pro. I, I, I'm so shitty I couldn't even make a pro the lowest pro league. You know, I played senior double A on the fourth line. 
says a lot about me. But I'd probably be a third liner in uh, in female professional sports once I go transgender or uh, uh, gender binary or binary, whatever the hell they're calling it. Ah, uh, yeah, things would be glorious. Things would be beautiful. The boys are back on top. We're so good at everything. We are so fucking magnificent at everything that we're a fucking hotter female than you bitches. That's how good we are. And Sports Illustrated proved that for us. Because if you seen that bitch walking down the street, you would, she'd snap your head back. Don't lie to me. You wouldn't know. And that's how good we are as men. That we can be hotter females than most females on the planet. Fuck, we are good. We are good. No, no wonder. No wonder they are inventing genders to try and fucking, you know, divvy us up. Never happened. We're like, we, we're, the eight, we're the 85 Oilers. We're the fucking USA Olympic basketball team from what, what was that, 98? Was it 98? I don't know. I don't, I don't follow basketball. When Jordan and all them went overseas, when it was Paris, we're that team. You never beat us. You're never, ever going to beat us at anything because we're that good. And what you have to do is like attack us mentally and bring us down. But then there's some that just strive above that. They're like, fuck you. We're still better than everything that you stand for. You bitches can put a pussy hat on and go march in the street. We're still better than you. We're still better than you. We're still good at everything. You can't compete. And we just proved that. Bruce turned into Caitlyn, won Woman of the Year. Now we got a fucking transgender female, according to, remember, according to Ben Shapiro's rules, that's still a fucking gentleman. So we have a gentleman as a hot chick on Sports Illustrated. Can you beat us? We're the heavyweight champ of everything when it comes to fucking genders. Everything. You can't. You can't touch this. Mm, 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 mm. No wonder you want us in cages so you can finally fucking win something. You pathetic fuck. What a pathetic gender. Ah. <laughs> no wonder God gave everything bad to you. Bleed for seven days. You have to bear our children. Because <laughs> we, we, we're too busy being great. We don't have time to have kids. That's the issue. <laughs> Boys, boys, boys. Oh, that was wonderful. That was great. Got a lot off my chest. Thank you for tuning in to another Danger Cats podcast. Just a reminder that podcast 69 at DangerCatsShop.com. Get 15% off your order, off the greatest clothing. For all you fat fucks, we finally have sizing that will fit you. Yes, took a while. All right, I'm sorry. Took me a while, but I got here. Also, on the Patreon, new video out of probably one of the most funniest amateur contests I've ever fucking seen. Some, uh, I don't know where she came from. Some, I think she was homeless, to be honest. Entered the contest, and it's brilliant. It's brilliant. I've never laughed so fucking hard. And that is on the Patreon. All those links are down below. Give her a click. Um, thank you to all the Danger Dong executives. Also down below, if uh, you subscribe to the Patreon and you support the channel, I truly appreciate it. Your name is down below, brother. And I thank you for being a Danger Dong executive producer. I almost fucked that word up. And I hope you all have a wonderful day. And thanks for tuning in to another Danger Cats episode. Ha <laughs> ha.